Welcome to WISE eLearning Module 4, Phases and Activities, Part B. In this module, we will learn about phases 4 to 6, the process that guides the intensive care coordination service component of the WISE program model. In the previous module, we covered engagement, assessing, and teaming phases. In this module, we will look at the last three phases of the WISE process, which include service planning and implementation, monitoring and adapting, and transition. The term WISE practitioners is used to describe the collection of WISE certified staff roles required for each team. These roles include the care coordinator, the family partner and or youth partner, and the mental health clinician. While it is typically the role of a care coordinator to facilitate and coordinate services and supports through these phases, which were adapted from the nationally recognized wraparound phases, all WISE practitioners should be partnering to meet the needs of the youth and family in the most effective way possible. We will begin by looking at an overview of Phase 4, Service Planning and Implementation. This phase builds upon the work done during the previous phases. Teams continue to build trust and mutual respect while they create an initial cross-system care plan. It is important to know any Medicaid services that are outlined as strategies must be prescribed clearly according to Medicaid documentation standards, regardless of whether the individual service plan is incorporated into the CSCP or a separate document. In this phase, the team also reviews and expands the crisis plan to reflect proactive and graduated strategies to prevent crisis or to respond to them in the most effective and least restrictive manner. During the development of these plans, it is important that the youth and family feel heard, that the needs chosen are the ones they want to work on, and that the strategies chosen have a reasonable chance of success. This phase should be completed during one or two meetings that take place within one to two weeks. The rapid time frame is intended to promote team cohesion and shared responsibility toward achieving the team's mission or overarching goal. In this phase, the WISE practitioners collaborate to meet the needs of the youth and family in the most effective way possible. These practitioners, including the care coordinator, the family partner and or youth partner and the mental health clinician work together with the youth and family to meet the following goals. To create a cross-system care plan or CSCP using a facilitated process that elicits multiple perspectives and builds trust and shared vision among team members with an ever-present focus that the youth and family drive the plan. To establish ground rules to guide team meetings. To base care planning in relationship to high needs and identified strengths as indicated on the child and adolescent needs and strengths assessment also referred to as a CANS. To establish a team mission that guides the planning direction and builds cohesion in the work of the team members and empowers the youth and their family. To build a set of prioritized needs, including the strategies to meet them, and to determine how the team will know when the outcomes have been met. To identify team tasks and roles and document commitments and timelines to identify potential problems and crisis, prioritize according to seriousness and likelihood 
of occurrence and create or update a youth and family driven detailed crisis prevention and response plan. Essential steps of the service planning and implementation phase include wise practitioners meet with youth and family prior to the team meeting to develop a list of possible needs of the youth and family based on the results of the CANS assessment. Wise practitioners will facilitate one or more team meetings to discuss and obtain agreement on the elements of the CSCP within the convened CFTs. The youth and family share their vision statement for their future. The team discusses and sets ground rules to guide the team meetings. The team reviews and expands the list of youth and family strengths. The team creates a mission statement that details a collaborative goal describing what needs to happen prior to transition from WISE. The team reviews and prioritizes the list of youth and family needs, respecting and including the preferences and priorities of the youth and family. The team determines the outcome statements that will help identify when the needs are met. The team brainstorms and prioritizes strategies for each need. The team creates and agrees upon action steps that support prioritized strategies. The team evaluates the crisis plan and adapts as necessary. Action steps should be documented and distributed among team members. In this phase, the CFT develops goals and objectives for all life domains in which the youth's mental health symptoms impair functioning, including family life, community life, education, vocation, independent living, and others as shown. The CFT identifies the specific interventions selected in the initial CSCP to meet those goals and objectives. The direct services interventions that are agreed by the CFT need to be delivered according to an individualized service plan coordinated with the cross-system care plan. The full array of Y services may be provided as medically necessary once WISE is authorized. Any clinical treatment services must be provided by a qualified clinician rather than a paraprofessional. Paraprofessionals and family partners and or youth partners may provide a follow-up on-care extension role for clinical services. For example, they may provide support to caregivers' efforts to manage behavior, support to youth skill building to develop emotional regulation skills, etc. Non-clinical direct services are typically provided by paraprofessionals under clinical supervision. Peers, including the family partner and or youth partners, provide these direct services. Family partners collaborate with other WISE practitioners to build trust and model collaboration, encourage the family to provide input in the establishment of ground rules, and assist the family in expressing their strengths, vision, preferences, and needs. Family partners will also ensure strategies are relevant and appropriate to the family. One of the many nice things about the CANS is that it pays attention to the life domain functioning of the family and caregiver. This ensures that they are given the attention they deserve in the cross-system care planning process. 
Family partners help with ensuring the family agrees with the plan, helping the team to understand the family's perspective, and reviewing the plan with the family. Similarly, youth partners work with other wise practitioners to build trust and model collaboration. The youth partner's role is integral in encouraging the youth to engage in the care planning process by helping them provide input in the establishment of ground rules and expressing their strengths, vision, preferences, and needs. Youth partners also help ensure strategies are relevant to the young person and that the youth agrees with the plan. Youth partners help the team understand the youth's perspective and review the plan with the youth. Although the mental health services under the WISE program model are funded by Medicaid, the program's model is intended to draw in other resources brought forward by the team. These supports and programs can be other formal supports like service providers and representatives of schools and child serving agencies and informal supports like family friends, and community members or programs. Once the team develops an initial cross-system care plan in the service planning and implementation phase, the team moves to the fifth phase, monitoring and adapting. During this phase, the CSCP is implemented, progress and successes are continually reviewed and changes are made to the plan and then implemented, all the while maintaining or building team cohesiveness and mutual respect. The goals and purpose of monitoring and adapting phase are to implement the CSCP, monitor completion of action steps and strategies, success in meeting needs, and achieving outcomes. To use a facilitated team process to ensure that the plan is continually revisited and updated to respond to the successes of initial strategies and the need for new strategies. To maintain awareness of team member satisfaction and buy-in to the process and take steps to maintain or build team cohesiveness and trust. The essential steps of monitoring and adapting include the following. The CFT continues to meet every 30 calendar days at a minimum to evaluate progress towards meeting needs and the effectiveness of indicated strategies. The CFT adjusts strategies to meet changes in the needs and outcomes. The team adds, subtracts, and modifies strategies to create the most effective mix of services and supports. The CFT evaluates whether there is progress towards the designated outcomes. The team adjusts the outcomes to guide next steps. The CFT adds members and strives to create a mix of formal, informal, and natural supports. The CFT celebrates successes and adds to the strengths as they are identified. Full CANS assessments are administered and entered into BHAs every 90 days to help track progress and to catch emerging needs and make changes to the plan as necessary. The WISE practitioners maintain ongoing communication outside of the team meetings to best monitor buy-in and to ensure that all members' perspectives are heard. The various WISE practitioners' activities in this phase include checking in and following up with team members about progress of the tasks in the cross-system care plan. This may mean helping with tasks 
when needed, in order to remove barriers. Wise practitioners will monitor and evaluate the outcomes and communicate regularly with team members. They will empower the family and youth to drive the WISE process and learn the skills to eventually lead their team. They will also assess for new needs and strengths, build trust, model collaborative relationships, and celebrate successes and maintain documentation. Additionally, during this phase, family partners will invite the family to family support functions and or community activities. They will assist the family in communicating with the team and will check in with them regularly to see how the plan is working for them. The family partner also helps the family and team to develop skills and to model collaboration. Youth partners will invite the youth to youth support functions and or related community activities. They will help the youth communicate with the team and will check in regularly to see how the plan is working for the youth. Youth partners will help youth and team to develop skills and to model a collaborative relationship. During this phase, the youth and family can expect to communicate regularly with the WISE practitioners about their plan and about the progress being made. Youth and family will contact appropriate team members with successes and needs. During team meetings, they will prepare to give feedback about their plan to the team. Lastly, youth and family will complete action steps they've agreed to. The activities of the monitoring and adapting phase are repeated until the team's mission is achieved and WISE is no longer needed. Then the team moves towards the last phase, transition. During this phase, plans are made by the team for a purposeful transition out of WISE with the following goals in mind. To plan a purposeful transition out of WISE in a way that is consistent with the 10 children's behavior health principles and that supports the youth and family in maintaining the positive outcomes achieved in the WISE process. To ensure that the cessation of WISE is conducted in a way that celebrates successes and frames transition proactively and positively. To ensure that the youth and family continue to experience success after WISE and to provide support if necessary. The focus on transition is continual throughout the WISE phases and the preparation for transition should be apparent, even during the initial phases of WISE. CFTs use the CANS to monitor for an increase of strengths and a reduction of needs. The CFT, using clinical judgment and supervision, will determine the beginning of the formal transition phase and make preparations for the youth and family to transition out of WISE. The timing of transition is determined by the CFT and outlined in the CSCP. Up to six months of formal transition are followed under the WISE model. The essential steps in this phase are, the CFT creates strategies within the CSCP for a purposeful exit out of WISE to a mix of possible formal and natural supports in the community, and if appropriate, to services and supports in the adult system. The CFT creates a post-WISE crisis plan with WISE practitioners, evaluating the team's comfort level of the plan and the plan sustainability. Plans should include action steps, 
specific responsibilities, and communication protocols. Planning may include rehearsing responses to crisis and creating linkage to post wise crisis resources. The CFT discusses responses to potential future situations, including crisis, and negotiates the nature of each team member's post wise participation with the team, youth, and family. New members may be added to the team to reflect identified post transition strategies, services, and supports. The WISE practitioners guide the CFT in creating a document that describes the strengths of the youth, family, and team members, and lessons learned about strategies that worked and did not work. The CFT prepares and reviews necessary final reports, for example, to court or participating providers. The CFT is encouraged to create and or to participate in a culturally appropriate commencement, celebration that is meaningful to the youth, family, and team, and that recognizes their accomplishments. During this time, CFT meetings reduce in frequency and ultimately cease. During transition, the youth and family will communicate any fears, needs, and concerns about the transition process. They will identify what they have learned and their successes during the WISE process. They will continue to be encouraged to participate in support groups and establish community activities. They will develop a process to stay in touch or reconvene the team if needed. Wise practitioners, usually the family partners and youth partners, will help the youth and family reflect on the wise process and identify and acknowledge achievements. When appropriate, they will discuss all the supports and services that are continuing post-WISE. And lastly, they will assist the youth, family, and team in developing a plan for a celebration that is relevant to the youth and family's culture and preferences. Remember that all six phases are an important process to follow. If the team is experiencing challenges, it could mean there is a need to return to a previous phase. You have now completed WISE Module 4, Phases and Activities Part B. The next module is WISE Team Meeting Components.